It's a spectacular bird. It is, of course, the hen harrier. We've been following a pair over the past few days and they really are masters in the air. This is the male bird bringing prey in to pass it to his mate, the female. She's much more drab by comparison, but that's for good reason, because it is she who will incubate the eggs and look after the chicks. So she has to be camouflaged in the heather where they have their nest. Oh, look at that, beautiful. Let's have another look at that food pass. The male drops the prey, a small bird, and the female catches it with no effort. Look at that. Mid-air food pass, gorgeous stuff. Now she's been taking her prey down to the ground and feeding on it in a very relaxed manner, which is making us wonder if she's even got eggs at the moment. Perhaps she has, perhaps they're, they're well advanced and in the warm conditions that we've had here when this was being filmed, she's just happy to have a bit of a stretch and feed herself. The male has been a fabulous provider, bringing plenty of food in. He's been doing most, if not all, of the hunting for his mate. He's pretty nervous of her, has to be said. Oh, she fumbled that. Yep, yeah, dropped that one down in the heather. Doesn't get it right every time, but that doesn't matter when you've got a male who's providing as efficiently as this guy. But he's, as I say, nervous of her, doesn't want to come in contact with the pointy bits. Oh, <laughs> for good reason. She's quite a bit bigger than him as well. <laughs> Just scratching his ear there. I wasn't uh, concerned by her at all. No, not in the least. Goes off and marches his beat to have another look. Now, the, the, the female's been bringing quite a lot of material into where we believe the nest to be. We haven't gone in for a close look. It's a bit sensitive at this stage, but with a bit of luck, over the next week or so, we should be able to introduce a camera and get a view of that nest. We have been literally perched on the edge of our seats, our perches, our nests, everything today, uh, because the chaffinches have been, well, I mean, they, They've been driving us all mad. They've been driving all you mad. We've heard reports of people going to the loo with their laptops to make sure that they don't miss the moment when that family fledged. With the children who have not been doing their homework because they're watching the chaffinches. What we need is a perfect old punk track to introduce what's been going on. Cue the chaffinches and the clash. Should I stay or should I go now? Should I stay or should I go now? Oh, I mean, it's just been tantalisingly close all day. And I have to say, we are now going to show you a bit of film which Chris and I haven't seen because literally as we had to leave the production village and walk here, things were still going on. So this is kind of a pricey of the day. So one Look. has jumped out there. Oh, no, hang on. really put his foot in <laughs> some other chaffinch's mouth, which isn't terribly good. But look, lots of wind beating. They've really got to exercise those wings. But how many are in there at the well, moment? Have we got... Oh, oh hang on. Oh, no, there no, there's two, but that, oh, that one's trying to go. Hey, God, his backside stuck in the twigs. That's a ter it happened to me once. It was terrible. <laughs> I did exactly what well, that chaffinch did. But look, they just can't leave, can they? Look. No, I mean, all... literally, this is this is all afternoon we've been watching this. OK, now, this one looks like it's made a decision. Oh, it has made... Oh, I think oh, it, I'm, I'm sure went. that made decision that was made went. for it. So this is the last one. This is the last one. And it's up there now. The others are probably still quite close, you see. Do you the, think? Yeah, oh, yeah, I don't think they would have gone far. I mean, they're not flying. Yeah. They're what we call branching. Right. They've moved out of the nest onto the surrounding branches. I mean, they can't fly yet, but they can flutter enough to keep their balance. So that's what they're doing. And as the adult comes in, when they, one of them sees it feeding one of the others, it thinks, oh, well, I've got to have some of that myself. And, that's, and that, that that's kind of leads it off. Le well, let's, we've got out. two views of our chaffinch there. So let's go to the close-up first to make sure they haven't snuck back in. No, nothing snuck back in. Could we go to the wide? and see if anything's there. That's it. It's They've done happened. it. Life. They have officially branched. What a relief. Those kids will be back onto their homework. Absolutely. And people won't be pleading incontinence <laughs> all day long so they can watch a laptop in a loo. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. But the thing that really interests me about badgers is that the self-same species is not just limited to the UK. It's found across Europe, into Asia, as far over as Japan. But it's the British badgers that they live in these big, much bigger 
family group. So they're quite like us in that respect. You get the young energetic types like Ben, sort of whippersnapper really, and you get the older, more mature members. But let me introduce you to one of the dear old ladies of this Badger clan. This badger is zippy. She's quite easily identifiable by her wobbly back legs and she tends to bounce on the spot. This is something that's developed over the last couple of years and she has some good days and she's got some bad days. It's not surprising because Zippy is 10 years old, the oldest badger in the clan, which makes her the sort of grandmother of the set. Another really easy way to pick her out of the crowd is this big pink patch on her nose, which shows up even better on the infrared camera. Then there's her claws. They're much, much longer than the other younger badgers in the clan, which probably means she's too old to be doing any of the digging of the set or the maintenance, which would normally wear them down. And if we just slow this bit down, those lighter patches on her neck, they're scars from being attacked by other clan members when she was much younger. Yeah, you could see that scarring on her neck and it was, it was quite sort of a lot of trauma and I was speaking to Don about it. Apparently, Zeppi had quite a, a abusive childhood here at this set. When she was younger, and it was possibly her brother, who was called Yippy, they were getting picked on relentlessly by the Badgers at his clan. Don felt there was quite a lot of pressure building up in the, in the clan and Yippy, the male, he disappeared, he ran away, he left home, whatever, he's gone, but Zippy, she, sort of being a bit of a battler, she fought for the right to stay at this clan 10 years on. She's still here. But usually it's a much more harmon harmonious scene here. Scene. When we've been really lucky, the Badgers have been relaxed enough to set about the very important task of personal hygiene. Badgers are meticulous about keeping themselves clean and free from pesky parasites such as fleas and lice with a good old scratch and a nibble. But this is the really interesting bit. This might look like Candy and Zippy just grooming one another, but if we take another look, if you watch Candy's back legs, there you go, that's actually scent marking. Badgers are mustelids. That's the same family as stoats, weasels, polecats, even otters. All of those species have large scent glands near their bottoms. Smell and sound are far more important senses than sight. And once they're happy that the badger next to them is part of the clan, they can set about a nice mutual grooming session and get someone else to scratch those harder to reach areas. You can really see how close knit this family are. We've had a bit of a mystery here. We've been here for what, almost two weeks now. And the only youngsters that we've been seeing are Candy and Dennis and they're cubs from last year. And we're beginning to think that, well, maybe there aren't any cubs at this set this year. Well, just the other night, have a look at what we saw. That is a cub looking very nervous and just running up to his mum in the background. The two of them are looking very shifty. I spoke to Don, he doesn't recognise that mother, so they're not from this territory. Um, bit of a mystery there. So, um, I'm not going to um, stay in this hide over the weekend. What I want to do is get out there and explore um, the streets and the sort of um, areas around about this territory, try and find out who they are. Before we go back over to Penstorp, Chris, I was wanting to ask you kind of if you knew what was going on. We've got no cubs at this set and we've got this strange cub coming in from a neighbouring territory. What do you think? It, it, it's really interesting because what my immediate suggestion would be was that that female was a member of the same clan of badgers and perhaps had snuck off from the main set where you are to give birth in what we call an outlier or an outlying set and only now has she brought that cub back in. But if Don says he doesn't recognise her as an individual, that's really odd. But given they're such territorial animals, why would a female bring a cub into such a perilous place because it, she, really odd, it, it, it is it's quite confusing you're going to have to do some good detective work Gordon down there <laughs> over the weekend to find out what's going yeah, on I you're think. going to have your work cut out